Welcome back everyone to our lesson on labor economics. In today's lesson, we are going to look at labor supply. And so the goals for this lesson will be to understand the concept of labor supply and its relationship with wages and leisure. And also you will be able to identify and describe the factors affecting the supply of labor. Supply of labor is the number of hours that people are willing and able to supply at a given wage rate. And if we have to put it simply, we would say that labor supply is the total amount of hours employees are available to work at the existing wage rate. The labor supply curve actually is upward sloping. And so this is the nature of the labor supply curve. It is positively sloped and so it expresses a positive relationship between wage and the supply of labor. So that is to say that labor supply increases whenever there is an increase in wage. And also when wage decreases, labor supply also decreases. Because when wage is increasing, then people are willing to offer themselves for work. And so the labor supply will tend to increase. And if the wage happens to decrease, then people will be discouraged to actually work because the wage rate is very low. And for that matter, that decreases the labor supply. So supply of labor does not depend on how much people actually like working, but rather it depends on how much people value leisure. Now, in economics, in labor economics, Leisure is going to be defined as the time not spent working. So in economics, we are just trying to distinguish between two things here. The first one is when the person is spending the time to work. And the other one is when the person is spending the time not to work. So the time you spend not working is what we are calling here as leisure. So in economics, leisure is not free. Actually, you know, in economics, uh, there is nothing like free lunch. So you need to think of leisure as some kind of a good, all right? And so every good has a price, unless of course we have some of them that are free goods, like the air we breathe in. It is actually very free, but you know that there are certain instances where if you happen to have some kind of medical condition and you are given oxygen, it is not free. So in economics, we hold on to the principle that in, there is nothing like free lunch, all right? And so you need to think of leisure as a good. And if it's a good, it actually has a price. So we say price of leisure. Now, when you decide not to work, then you are going to spend whatever time you have as leisure, be it whether you want to spend it with your family, you want to just be at home and do nothing, or you want to go and watch sports or whatever. We are just going to classify all of that as leisure. And we are saying that that leisure is not free, so it has a price. All right. So if you spend your time not working, then you gain the price of that leisure. So you enjoy yourself that you, you can think of that as the sort of happiness that you get if you kind of you are not working and then you are enjoying yourself. All right. But then if you decide to spend your time to actually offer yourself for work, then the price of offering yourself for work is actually the wage that you receive. So we're just trying to say that because you have to now decide between using your time for work or using your time for leisure, we are saying that the price of leisure actually equals your wage. And so if you decide to work, it means that you are going to lose the time for leisure. And if you decide to also spend time for leisure, you're going to lose the time that you would have available for work. And so the opportunity cost of wage is leisure. That is, if you decide to go work, it means that you lose the opportunity to actually have time for leisure. And so leisure becomes your opportunity cost. So we understand that leisure is actually the opposite of earning income. So basically, if you decide to spend your time to work, then you're going to lose the time you would have for leisure. And if you decide to also have time for leisure, then you're going to lose the time you have for work. And so leisure is the opposite of earning income or wage. So generally, the supply of labor increases when wage increases. We saw that from the labor supply curve, right? And so let's look at this very table. Now we have three columns here, and the first column is the wage in hours, so how much you are paid per hour. 
And then we have the leisure demand. That means how many hours you spend for leisure and the supply of labor is how many hours you are going to offer yourself for work. So we are trying to say that when the wage is 10 Ghana cities per hour, then you would want to spend eight hours for leisure and then six hours for work. So you see that the le leisure demand is eight hours and the supply of labor is actually six hours. Now, when the wage rate increases from 10 Ghana cities to 15 Ghana cities, then you would realize that because the wage rate has increased, you would want to work more so you can make more money. And for that matter, the number of time you would have for leisure would decrease. So you see that there is a decrease in the number of uh, the, the number of hours for leisure to six hours, whereas the time you spend working is actually nine hours because that is what every rational worker would want to do. If the wage rate increases, then I'm going to increase the number of hours I spend working. And for that matter, I will earn higher wage rates. Again, we notice that when the wage rate should increase to 20 Ghana cities, then you would want to still spend less time for leisure. And then that is three hours there. So there is a decrease to three hours. But you would want to spend more time working, which is 14 hours at, in, in, on the third row. So you would see that when the wage rate is increasing, then the number of hours you would want to spend at work would actually increase. Now, you notice that in Ghana, we actually receive salaries on a monthly basis. So it's kind of difficult to really measure how much you are being paid per hour. And even our minimum wage is expressed as how much we receive per day. But if you go to places like the United States or the United Kingdom, you notice that they actually pay you per the number of hours you offer yourself. So let's understand it from that very perspective. All right. So when your wage rate, if you are being paid per hour, if your wage rate increases, then you would want to increase the number of hours you spend working so you can earn much more than before. But the time that you would actually spend for leisure will tend to decrease because now you want to work more and then earn more because the wage rate is naturally higher. So sometimes when wages are very, very high, then workers may be earning so much that they actually decide to work fewer hours. All right. If you kind of get this um, intuition. So your wage rate is so much higher. And then you notice that even if you decide to work like five hours, okay, um, in a day, you 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 notice that you will be able to earn still a higher income that you need to actually make ends meet. That is how, how the whole thing goes. So when your wage rate is very, very high, then you realize that you do not need to work so much, okay, you do not need to spend so much time working because your wage is already higher, even if you are working like three hours or four hours. So at a point when the wage rate becomes very, very high, then workers realize that they are earning so much that they can decide to even work fewer hours because they will still be making their, their, their income. And so when that happens, your labor supply curve is backward sloping, all right, backward sloping. Now, this is how the whole intuition goes. So when the labor supply curve is backward sloping, you would notice that, let's say, this is the initial level of wage, all right, and then this would be the how much time you'd want to spend working. So that is going to be the labor supply. You are offering yourself a work. Now, if your wage rate increases to this very level, you would notice that you would also spend more time working because yes, you want to earn much higher than before. If your wage rate increases yet again, then you would want to also increase the number of hours that you spend working. But at a point when the wage rate is very, very, very high at this very level, then you would realize that even working fewer hours still ends you this very high level of wage. And so for that matter, what happens to the number of hours that you spend working? You notice that the number of hours now will tend to decrease. So this is the very situation of the backward sloping labor supply curve. So when wage rate at the initial stages um, is increasing, then the number of hours you would want to spend working will also tend to increase. Now, the wage rate increases up to a point that you feel now that you are earning so much higher wage, you would want to actually spend less time working and then more time for leisure, right? Because your wage rate is already high. So this is the backward sloping um, labor supply curve. But in uh, subsequent discussions, we are going to stick with the positively sloped labor supply curve. But rather, we're not going to deal with the backward sloping labor supply curve as we are seeing on the, on the screen at this time. 
So what are the factors that affect labor supply? One is wage rates. Yes, higher wage rates attract more workers, and so that tends to increase the labor supply. And then if the wages are also very low, that discourages people from actually offering themselves for work, and so that also tends to decrease labor supply. So wage rate is a factor that affects labor supply. Again, education and skills. Yes, if you are highly educated with specialized skills, and these skills are actually in higher demand, then that tends to increase the labor supply. On the other hand, if your education is limited, your skills are limited, then that can actually restrict the ability of people to offer themselves for work where it requires um, specialized skills, all right? And so for that matter, that also tends to decrease the labor supply. Again, for government policies and regulations, such as the minimum wage. So for instance, if the government tends to increase the minimum wage, then wage would actually become much higher. And so people would want to offer themselves for work. And so labor supply will increase. We also have other regulations such as labor protection laws and employment regulations. All of these can impact the labor supply. And if some of these policies and regulations are also not in favor of those who want to offer themselves for work, then they would actually not offer themselves for work. And so that would decrease the labor supply. So yes, government policies and regulations can also affect labor supply. Now again, migration. Yes, migration patterns can also affect labor supply such that if you are in a country where there is a large inflow of immigrants into that country, yes, of course, uh, the labor supply will tend to increase because these immigrants are willing to work at the existing wage rate. Again, if you also live in a country where more people are living that country, then that tends to decrease the labor supply available in such a country. So these are also the factors that affect labor supply. And so that brings us to the end of this presentation. And at this point, I will take your questions.